Hey everybody, it's Travis with the Magic Cave, and I got a super fun deck uh, for y'all to try if you've got the parts for it. It's geez, it's, it's so fun. Um, I think one of the biggest overlooked cards, well, some would argue it's not overlooked, but one of the biggest overlooked cards uh, that's not seeing as much play as it should is Terror of the Peaks. So this is a crazy card. Just real quick, it's a 5-4 flying for 5, and spells your opponent's cast that target Terror of the Peaks cost an additional 3 life to cast. And whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Terror of the Peaks deals damage equal to that creature's power to any target. So, that's ridiculous. So we're going to try to exploit this as much as we can. Um, here's the deck that we're using, and I'm going to go over it real quick, just so you guys get an idea. Uh, I have nothing in the sideboard, because I do best of 1. Uh, but you could very easily make a sideboard out of just like any kind of red and green and white kind of situational cards, you know. Um, so, uh, in here I have God's Willing. I only have one copy because, well, I, like I said, I don't pump money into this game. So, oh, I've actually got some uncommons. So I might get some more God's Willing and put in here. Um, but for the moment, I only have one God's Willing. Uh, target creature gains can protection of the color of your choice. So ideally what you're trying to do is start a mutate chain with one of your creatures. Now, ideally, what you want is to mutate a Paradise Druid. Um, mutate things on top of it, because it has hexproof by default. Uh, obviously, you're not going to attack with it or tap it, uh, unless you really need the mana, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but what you're trying to do is mutate as many auspicious sterics or any other kind of like mutation that you've got on top of this druid while already having terror of the peaks out um, every time you mutate auspicious sterics you get um, a certain number of permanent cards off the top of your library and those come into play depending on like the number of times that you've mutated so this number gets bigger and bigger every time you mutate so it's super easy to get so many cards in play at one time and the stack is predominantly creatures so if you were to have a Terror of the Peaks out, and you were to mutate a creature out, and it entered the battlefield with the Sterix mutation, then boom, you've got some instant damage to do to any target. Um, so, with God's Willing, you're going to protect uh, one of your creatures from some kind of removal. Uh, ideally, uh, you wouldn't need to do this with Paradise Druid, but you know it happens. Sometimes you need to mutate on another creature. Specifically, you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Um, Arboreal Grazer, he's used to get some lands out quick because the faster you have lands, the faster that you can start mutating things on. Um, two copies of Ranger's Guile. Uh, it's good to get hexproof on a creature. Um, a lot of people sideboard this card, but I find it's really useful, especially whenever you can't have a Paradise Druid out or if you've already started mutating on top of another creature. Um, Feet of Resistance, this is what I added to the deck to kind of make up for the lack of God's Willing. It's not as cheap, but it does give a plus one, plus one counter, and it gives protection from the color of your choice. Uh, it's a great little card. Um, it's Honestly, it's probably one of my favorite cards in Core Set 2021. Um, it doesn't get enough credit. Um, Paradise Druids, I have three copies in here because for some reason I just don't have four. Um, now that I've got a couple wild cards, I may top it out at four because it's a super important card to have in this deck uh, like i said you're going to be mutating on top of this so uh mirror shield is another great card for mutating um especially if you have a very valuable creature that you don't want to get targeted by any kind of removal so this gives that your creature hex proof and it also has like an added benefit of being able to block a creature with death touch so that's really great um Ideally, though, you're not going to use it for that. You're just using it for the hexproof and the hexproof only. Uh, I have four copies of Krinko. Now, Krinko is great, 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 great in this deck. If you can start mutating on top of Krinko and attacking with Krinko every turn, it gets nuts. Especially when you have Terror of the Peaks out, because I'm sure a lot of you know you're going to get a lot of little tokens out. For every single token that enters the battlefield with Krinko, you get to ping your opponent or an opponent's creature for one damage every time one of these guys pops out so that damage adds up really quick especially if uh, say you do have a mirror shield on Krinko he can't be really targeted by anything so 
you can start pumping him up one way or another. Um, so I've got four copies of him, two copies of Cultivate. This will let you get your lands a little bit quicker. Um, you already have a little bit of Ramp of Paradise Druid and Arboreal Grazer. Um, like I said, don't don't tap that for mana. But, I mean, you never know. You, you may be in a situation where you need the actual mana. So, um, as far as mutating stuff goes, I've got uh, four Cub Wardens in here. Uh, this is another great card that has really great synergy with uh, Krinko and Terror of the Peaks. Because uh, every time you mutate, you get two 1-1 one -one cats with lifelink. Um, these will, of course, ping your opponent for one damage every time they come out. And another great thing is these have lifelink. So you can chump block with these guys. Um, you can, I mean, just straight up attack with them, too, if you wanted to. You're going to have an army of creatures a lot of the time. Um Vulpakeet, um, Vulpakeet and Gem Razor, you can add some more of, like, it's really, it's, it's up to your preference. Uh, I added Vulpakeet for flying, um, it also gives some plus one, plus one counters, that's good to make Krinko a little bit bigger if you're mutating on top of him. Um, you could use, uh, some Oracorns if you'd like a little more life gain. Um, honestly though, I, I haven't seen a need for it. You get enough life gain with Cub Warden, so I, I don't think you necessarily need it. Uh, gem Razors, these are a must in basically every single mutate deck. Um, t three mana to mutate a 4-4 with Reach and Trample. I mean, it, it's hard to pass up on that. And plus, you have the added benefit of destroying an artifact or enchantment. That is killer. That's an easy way to main board uh, some kind of artifact or enchantment destruction without taking up like a creature slot or anything like that. Um, I only have one copy just because... I only have one copy, um, but ideally you'd like to have four of these guys, definitely. Um, four Migratory Great Horns. These guys are really great for getting your mana out, um, just in case that something does go wrong and you need to, you need to have like a little mana. You know, you, you're going to want to have as many of these guys in here. So I have four in here. Uh, you're also going to have four Auspicious Sterics. These guys are, these are the guys that pull their weight in this deck. Um, as I said before, you're going to end up getting a lot of permanents entering your battlefield every time you mutate on top of this creature. So, having four copies of this is absolutely necessary. Um, Terror of the Peaks, we've already gone over. I've only got two copies of him. As soon as I actually get some uh, Mythic Rare wild cards, I'm going to get two more copies of this. And it it's just, it's killer. It, it, it makes the deck so fun. Um, in addition to this, I have three copies of Embercleave. Uh, Embercleave is... It's tricky. It's it's tricky. Uh, whenever you end up getting it out on the battlefield, a lot of times you'll um, mutate and your Sterics will bring it in and you've ended the game and you didn't even know it. Um, Endraise Forerunners, this is another great card to get onto the battlefield with your Sterics. Um, it suddenly makes all the little tokens that you've made throughout the game quite vicious. They all get Vigilance and Trample, so you can... It's, it's a game ender. These two cards right here are easily a game ender. Um... For lands, I don't know, for some reason it's not showing my numbers correctly on my lands. Um, planes, uh, I have a couple copies of Castle Embrith. Because, uh, like I said, uh, if you're going real wide with a lot of tokens, which, you know, really isn't the focus of the deck, but it ends up happen happening inevitably. So, having uh, Embrith out gives a little more power in case you need to brute force your way through. Uh, Mountain, Castle Garenbrig, this is great uh, for getting a lot of green mana. Um, the deck's pre predominantly green, so if you do need to get a lot more mana to like try to pump out your Sterix mutate cost real quick, it's great for that. Um, got a lot of dual color lands. Um, I did have a little trouble getting um, life early on because the, the deck is kind of slow to start, uh, so you you want to have some kind of survivability. Um, I've added some like little just little. Uh, rugged Highlands to gain a little life when it enters the battlefield. Uh, obviously, you can get some Shock Lands because that's the best way to get your colors necessary. Um, I've got some Sacred Foundries, some Stomping Grounds. Um, if you have any kind of the Temples, uh, Scrying is always great. It's an incredibly underrated ability. Uh, you can sift through your whole deck with Scry, and you wouldn't even be missing out on anything. So, I mean, anything that you've got, like these Temples, put them in. Uh, I've got some Blossoming Sands to get a little more life gain, another green and white Shockland, and then Fable Passage. 
uh, four copies of those because you are running three different colors. So that's the deck. Um, again, you can always add and interchange some stuff if you if you find that you're uh, having a lot more trouble with flying creatures. You know, you can add some more Vulpakeets. If you don't think you're getting enough life gain, add you some Oracorns. Uh, basically, anything in the mutate tree can go can go in here. Um, but that being said, let's get into a game because I'm talking too much about the deck and I want to play it. I've I just I've had so much fun with this deck. It's ridiculous. I also have another variation of it that is just Gruel Colors. Uh, it's a little bit faster. Um, I might show that in another video. I might show it in this one. Um, but for now, let's just go over and play this deck real quick. Oh, whoops. Again, we're not playing ranked just because I don't feel like getting stressed out and angry tonight, so I'm not going to play ranked. Um, what about all those bannings, though? Grow Spiral, gone. Uh, Teferi, gone. Cat Oven combo is dead. Um, the Witch Oven is, is still very much in play, but I uh, I don't see it seeing as much. I mean, it's still useful, but not, as, not like it once was. Um, me, personally, I am so glad, so glad to see Cauldron Familiar gone. I That was one of my biggest peeves with the current meta was just seeing sacrifice deck after sacrifice deck. Now, I'm not saying that we're not going to see any more sacrifice decks, because, I mean, of course we will. It's, it's a powerful archetype. But I, I, it's not going to be what it, once it, what it once was, you know. Um, so we had a pretty good hand here. We had a couple of Fabled Passages. Um, normally I would kind of, like, rotate this out, but we have a lot of Mutate stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and get our white here. We've got another Fabled Passage, so I can get a red. Uh, it's weird we actually have a full hand of green and white. Um, I guess we'll try to get this Mirror Shield down as quick as we can. And um, see if we can get that equipped on one of our creatures here. Um, now see, this is kind of a little bit of a problem that I'm running into. Is I end up having a handful of mutate creatures. That I end up having to just play their their outright cost on. Um, oh, nice cloppers! I've been seeing a lot more her lately. Um, actually, I've been seeing a lot more gruel in general. So she's a great card, actually. Um, I think she's another like kind of underrated card. Uh, let's get us another green, and we'll go ahead and get another white too, just in case if we draw into um, like a cub warden, we're going to need that double white. Uh, to be able to play it. Now, Clothis does a lot of like, graveyard play, so we're going to end up taking quite a bit of damage. But hopefully, we can get going here in a minute. Um, we'll go ahead and do another passage. And we'll grab another green. Because we're not drawing any, any of our red cards, which is a little bizarre. Um, Go ahead and do our Great Horn. That way, in case Rada tries to sneak in some damage, we can stop that from happening. Now, we've got that one white open, just in case we want to give our Great Horn protection. Um, ideally, I don't want to mutate on top of this, but at this point, I really don't have a choice. I can pump a little mana into Mirror Shield and equip it and try to give the Great Horn. Some hex proof. Oh, see now, we're getting a little bit of casualties of war already. Nice. Ah, so at the very least, we're going to give protection to the Great Horn here. We're going to give him protection from green, just in case Rada wants to attack. We'll put you on the bottom. We just need to get a hold of some more creatures here. Um, we lost our red mana, but that's okay. We got another passage in our hand. All right, we got a druid. Nice. So we're going to go ahead and pop that Druid down. Just because it's nice to have another little creature out. We'll go ahead and grab another mountain. Hopefully they don't have another casualties. But it seems like here lately they they come in twos. Like you, you'll end up seeing... You'll end up seeing a lot of them. Luckily though, if they want to 
get rid of something. They can't get rid of our uh, druid here because she does have hex proof. Let's go ahead and grab another red just in case they want to try to like target it again. And uh, we'll swing in with our great horn here. Tapped out. They probably don't want to use, lose their rata. And we can always block. So they're doing quite a bit of graveyard hate here. All the damage we've taken this turn or this game has been from um, basically just Clothus just tearing us apart from our own graveyard. Um, and see, and then now we're getting all lands here. It's okay. Oh, okay. A Cub Warden. Uh, we could do that to make up a little bit of our life deficit here. So we'll go ahead and attack with him again. Hmm. I'd like it if we could get a Terror out. But, uh... This is a peculiar deck. It's uh, it's almost like this gruel and oh nice. That was a good way to get rid of our uh, our little druid there. We're just going to, have to play the cub warden outright. We really have no more options. Uh, I've noticed another problem with this deck is there's not any kind of like acceleration. You know, like, besides ramp, there's no like card draw in it. Um, I've been thinking about adding a um, Line of War Visionary or, or like a few of them just to get some kind of card draw. And okay, this guy's this guy's being a smart aleck. It's okay, it happens. Honestly, we probably should have mulliganed the hand that we had, but you end up seeing a lot of stuff that you could maybe do something with, and you know, it, it happens. So maybe if we get lucky, we'll draw into something good here. If we get another Sterix, that'd be okay. Um, they're attacking with her, and they probably have something up her sleeve, but we can't really afford to take any more damage, so. Yep. Okay. And so we just got Krinko. We'll go ahead and scoop. Those. There's really no coming back. They have so much momentum. So many cards in their hand. There's, and they're sitting at 23. So we really can't come back from that. So let's just get another game going. I really want to show this deck off. Whenever this deck gets going, it's it's so fun. Now, like I said, I do have a variant of this deck that I've been playing around with that is Gruel. It is just red and green. It's a lot faster. Uh, you actually, it has a little more ramp in it, I believe, and you don't have to try to get that third color, but whenever you don't have white, you don't have that added utility of life gain, or uh, your feet of resistances, or your God's willing, any kind of that protection that you would normally be giving to any of your creatures, you just don't have. And, uh, okay, we got an Ember Cleave. We don't have a Mountain, so these Embers are going to come and tap, but that's okay. We have all of our colors, and we have a Paradise Druid, so let's see if we can build off of this. We'll go ahead and drop our Embrith first, because if it comes in tap, that's fine. We'll drop a Forest next turn, and play our Druid. Okay, red and blue, so it could be Izzet, but I haven't seen a lot of Izzet lately. It's more red, blue, and black. Oh, black, wow. Dread Horde Invasion. I ain't seen you in a little bit, buddy. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, let's go ahead and... Oh, let's go ahead and do our plans. We're going to head and mutate our Vulpikeet on top of it. Does this bad boy have... Nope, he has flying. We're not going to chance it. We're not going to attack with it. I'd love to get the damage in. But we just we can't risk tapping it because we're going to end up building on and on and on on this creature. So we, we really can't change it. All right, now we got terror. So now let's uh, let's go ahead and we're not really going to play anything this turn, I don't think. Um, let's go ahead and get our other mountain now. 
it's oh it's so tempting because honestly they'll probably target the Terror of the Peaks before they would our Vulpakeet here <sighs> I'm taking a chance but I'm gonna go ahead oh I want to get Terror out now this seems like probably just like a straight up a mass deck it seems like uh, and see they're hovering over it it's okay, it just it gives them another turn to focus on something aside from our health. Um, one of the biggest things that people forget about in Magic is that your life is a resource, and you should use it like you would mana or your lands or anything like that. I mean, if you live with, you win the game with 20 life or 1 life, you still won the game. So, we'll go ahead and take this damage, because we don't want to lose that terror. Nice. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to have to take two damage on this because we need two white to be able to mutate on top of it. And let's go ahead and drop our Cub Warden. Put him on top. Alright. So now we can start pinging. And get rid of these two busy ears. Very nice. Alright, we'll go ahead and swing in with the terror. Now see, we're dangerously close to just killing them. We haven't even done any kind of like shenanigans with Terror of the Peaks yet, so... Oh, nice. Oh, this is... Mm -mm -mm. I think we're gonna take it. We're gonna take it. Alright, so we'll go, go ahead and drop our em Emberus. Uh, I think we might be able to get him with the Ember Cleave. Let's go ahead and swing with everything. Let's see what they do. Can't really block. I mean, you can block the 1 1s. Alright, go ahead and Ember Cleave. Now, I could have sat here and done all the math, but I mean, this isn't a save. He's at one health. <laughs> and now he's dead. Look at that. <laughs> Good game. Good game, guy. That's interesting. I haven't seen an Amass deck in quite a little bit. Um, Amass is fun. I, I remember when more of the Spark came out. Um, I was all about Amass. Um, Charlotte's actually got a really good Amass deck. She's got a better Amass deck than I do. Um, we might show it on the channel at some point. No, yeah, it's not bad. So, like you guys saw, it's uh, it's it's really fun to play with. Um, I'll show you the red and green one real quick, um, just to give you some other ideas. Um, you could also go straight red, I suppose, but I I necessarily wouldn't. Um, a lot of people will probably make some arguments with this deck, but um, it's it's a little more aggressive. Uh, you can get going a lot quicker. Um, Arboreal Grazers. Um, oh, I actually forgot that I have three of them now. I need to add some more of these. These guys are great for ramping up your mana. Uh, Pelt Collectors, Ranger's Guile, uh, Unleash Fury. Now, this is a great card to come out of Core 2021. Double the power of target creature until end of turn. That is ridiculous with this and I can't wait I don't have any cast uh, I don't I don't have any uh, ember cleaves in here wow I think I've probably just going straight gruel I, I, I'm gonna stick them in here I'm gonna take some of these thunder shamans out and uh, put some ember cleaves in here um, ember cleave with this you're gonna end the game it doesn't matter if your creature is like a 5-5 five five or what I mean any any kind of like moderately beefy creature and you unleash fury and pop an ember cleave on you're going to end up killing something um but anyway uh drowsing tyranidon just because this is uh, just a super easy drop if you want something that's maybe just as good and has a little more utility um you can use um what are those things called it's a little force troll for two green uh let me change this out for a second what's his name 
I always space on his name. Barkhide Troll. This is a great... Uh, he's basically a 3-3 for the same cost as Drowsing Tyranodon, and he doesn't have um, the kind of restrictions. Uh, you end up getting a lot of 4-4s four out, no problems, or creatures with at least 4 power. So, I mean, it, it's up to you. Um, I think I have him in here just because I, I wanted to play around with some dinosaurs, so you can, so you can switch them out. Uh, Paradise Druids, of course you got to have these... Uh, these are going to be like your main source of like ramping up mana. They're not going to be as important as in the other deck because this has like no mutating in it whatsoever. Um, Domri's Ambush, just because it's a great utility card. Get rid of creature. Uh, Zertog Goblins. Garrick's Harbinger. Now these guys are killer. Uh, these are one of the best green rares out of 2021. I don't care what anybody says. Um, as much of black as running around having hexproof from it and doing combat damage. Um, uh, it's, you're going to get a creature or a planeswalker every time you do it. I mean, especially in like a creature heavy deck, it's, it's nice. So remember, ideally everything is supposed to focus around Terror of the Peaks. So if you get more of those, the better. Um, having Harbinger lets you set up your hand a little bit better. Um, Grumgully is great. He basically boosts every bit of damage that Terror of the Peaks is doing whenever a creature comes in. Uh, Grill Spellbreaker. Uh, if you have four of these guys, it wouldn't be enough. These are amazing cards. You'd be surprised at how often uh, somebody's removal is just thwarted by the fact that he has Hexproof during your turn. Um, Rhythm of the Wild, just because if you're running Gruel, you have to have Rhythm of the Wild. <laughs> I'm, I'm, kind, I'm half kidding, but I mean, really, it's such a great card for three mana. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to have it. Savage Smash. Um, also another great card um, some of the only removal that you're going to get in green uh well, well red has its fair share of like damage and everything like that but if you want something that's just like based around your creatures the savage smash the dommy's ambush if you have ram throughs any of those prey upon any of these fight cards like um brash is another good one any of these are going to be great for just getting rid of creatures uh questing beasts if you had four of them in here, you wouldn't hurt my feelings. It'd be a great card. I only have one. So, I mean, it's a great card to have in here. It's a great card to have in any deck that has green. Um, Sundra Shaman, I had him in here just for utility. Um, it, it's nice to just have a creature that's hard to block and one that gets rid of it. artifacts or enchantments. Uh, you can always switch this out for a Gem Razor, though. A Gem Razor is a lot easier to play around. Um... Tear of the Peaks, because that's the whole point of the deck. Um, a lot of people are... Basically, you, you pick between Terror of the Peaks or Quartzwood Crasher. Um, a lot of the times, I was actually just watching a stream the other day on Twitch uh, with Power Dragon. I don't know if any of you watch him, but if you do, definitely check him out on Twitch. It's uh, P-O-W-R-D-R-A-G-N, Power Dragon, on Twitch. He's a... A really nice guy. He's super knowledgeable and knows his stuff. Uh, but check him out. And he was making the argument that Quartzwood Crasher, while it's a great card, anytime that you play it, you're already basically winning. Um, there's plenty of times where, like, I, I have to agree with him. Anytime that I drop one of these guys, the game's already going great. So, I mean, at Terror of the Peaks, he's, he's arguably easier to cast most of the time he's got a smaller body but he's harder to get rid of because of that three additional life to cast to try to get rid of him and really tear of the peaks does it a lot better but for me like having them both in this kind of deck is pretty great if you somehow manage to get both of these out at the same time you're you're just you're doing damage left and right i mean with Trample, you're going to have a creature come in. When that creature comes in, it's going to do damage. It, 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 they really complement each other well. Uh, Vivian, basically just because she makes 3-3 beasts. And there's just so much that you can do with them. Vigilance Counter Reach, Trample, that kind of thing. It's great. And her minus 2 ability is even better. Um, it's an easy way to search up some of the many creatures that are in this deck. Um, Thrash, which I showed you a second ago is great for getting a creature out but predominantly you're using it just for the the first spell not threat you're just using it for the thrash and uh ravager worm just because that is a killer mythic if you're running gruel 
Uh, he's a little bit harder to cast, but that's okay. Um, Beanstalk Giant. Ideally, you could do a lot more of these. If you're having problems with mana, you can pop these in and get a little more mana. Uh, the Great Hinge. Um, these guys also increase the damage that each one of your creatures are going to do whenever they pop in with Terror of the Peaks. If you have Grum Gully out with the Great Hinge, these creatures are coming in with two additional plus one plus one counters on it. So, I mean, even if you did play something tiny like a Paradise Druid, then you're popping four damage on any target whenever they enter the battlefield. And, I mean, that's that's nothing to scoff at. That's a lava coil at any time, you know, you play a creature. And uh, lands, it's basically the same as the other deck, uh, just minus all the white lands. Castle Embrith, Mountains, Castle Glamberg, uh your dual colors. I, I did gain, uh, put a lot more, like, Rugged Highlands in to get a little more life gain, because there's hardly any life gain in this entire deck except for the Great Hinge. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much this deck. So, like I said, uh, play around with them, see if you guys like them. Um, like I said, Red and Green's a lot more aggressive, but... The red, green, and white, I'm kind of leaning more towards because it's got a lot more utility. Um, so basically, if you guys like what you saw, like what you, you heard, uh, give us a thumbs up or a like. And be sure to comment and give us some ideas for this. If you have any kind of like ideas for this kind of deck type, put them in the comments. You know, like Let us know what you think. Uh, we strive to make you guys happy. Like I mean, we do this because we love magic and we love having fun, but we love hearing what you guys think. So just give us a message down below and let us know what you think. And, uh, you know, we have all our Instagram and all that kind of stuff if you want to follow us. Uh, again, we're trying to get into Twitch. Uh, we're trying to upgrade our sound equipment and everything like that to try to make the audio a little bit better. Um, so hopefully, you know, we're going to keep going, moving forward and making everything better as we go. And, Really, I mean, we wouldn't do that unless you guys were really enjoying what we did. So we, we appreciate each and every one of you. And uh, that's basically it. But thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I'm Travis. I'll see you later.